And it looks like this thing's working, I guess. All right, hey fellas and ladies, for those of you who are into doing the crazy stuff that we do out here in the woods. Yeah, crazy stuff. So I got a curveball for all you fellas out there that had um, uh, some really wonderful input. All right, well, let's re first review um, uh, the, the clutch issue in the Toyota pickup. And because uh, things have changed a little. Oh, that was wild. A little bit of dust. Or I lost it now. A little fiber. It looked like a ghost coming in here, but I could see the fiber. It's the spirits. Just th th yeah, it's um. Start having orbs like woo woo dude, you know. All right, so stay focused here. All right, my friends, let's review. I put up the video asking you guys to help me figure out why a certain thing happened. And um, uh, you guys had some really awesome, awesome uh, ideas and suggestions. Uh, a lot of outliers that were kind of, oh, that's an interesting thought. And so some things have changed here. Uh, I went and I put an order in for the clutch kit and said, you know, screw it. If I got to do this, let's just get her done. And, um, you know, because I was considering putting the truck up uh, for potential sale, supposedly, you know, if things work. I would need the my, uh, currency units to move if we sold the place and all that stuff. So I'm like, so much going on. And then, yeah, some crazy things have happened. So when I put the video up, I was asking you to explain something to me. Why? the clutch was stuck open now it's a hydraulic clutch so you have a master cylinder uh, master cylinder and the slave cylinder and the pedal pushes the master cylinder pushes hydraulic fluid around to the slave cylinder the slave cylinder moves the lever and everything was working properly on that i had been experiencing some issues with the truck for the last few weeks and it was in the last couple of days that seemed to be uh, the most extreme and basically what was happening was is no matter how far to the floor I pushed the pedal um, it was not disengaging the clutch enough uh, to allow for you to shift the gears so I would literally have to turn the truck off put it in first gear and start it to start going and once I once I went you know you're going you know if your clutch is failing and it's in the closed position as long as you know how to um, uh, fluctuate the RPMs of your engine, you can shift without using a clutch. You know, a lot of people know how to do that. I've done it quite a bit, especially when I was racing um, in my youth. I used to race, and some of you don't know that, but I've never really dived into that far back in my past. So I, I've had opportunity. I've, I've torn apart uh, uh, standard I've torn apart a, a automatic t transmission. I've, I've, I've gotten into them. I know how they work. Okay. So the issue was, okay, I was doing this. And then the final day when I pulled in from going down to my buddy Ken's to, um, to upload a video for you guys, um, when I got back and I said, you know what, in the morning I'm going to screw with this. I'm going to see if I can figure out if I can gain a little bit more in the pedal just to make it for, uh, you know, a day or two or a week or two until I can you know figure out what to do well that morning I went out and T was gonna help me put the um, T was gonna help me put a little shim in it so basically where the if you saw in the photo the thumbnail uh, uh, that of the the video was a, a picture of the uh, slave cylinder on the lever and what I wanted to do was I, I, I had her push it Let's see, push it open, get it here, and then put a bolt in here to hold the lever open. And then and then once the, the slave cylinder came back, put a little shim in there between it as just a check to see if that, if that would allow me to have a little bit more pedal. I did that, and then what ensued was uh, when, I, when we got it and left, let, let off of it, something weird happened. And that was... Um, uh, the the clutch never re-engaged. So after, even after I took the shim out back to where it was, where I hadn't even messed with it, you could push the pedal clutch down, and, uh, pedal back and forth, and it wouldn't even engage. 
okay? So that was weird. It's, you know, it stuck open. How, you know, what do we do? And you had, you guys had a bunch of good ideas. One of the good ones was, okay, well, um, you know, uh, put it in gear, whichever way you can pull it, and then pull it and see if the, the axle could turn the transmission and thus turn the throw out bearings and pressure plate enough to wiggle them so that they would pop in and, and re-engage. Tried that this morning finally. Uh, didn't get to it because I was real busy uh, doing the video with you uh, with Billy yesterday and then helping Robert with the, the, the sawmill and the woods and all the things that I've been doing. I've been busy. So I finally did that this morning and it didn't work. Um, I tried to pull it back. Well, I pulled it on out to where I could face it up the other way and the idea was this. Okay, um, my body can says it's kind of messy. Uh, um, you want to use my garage to do the work on the transmission? I said fine. So I went over there, and plus uh, I needed to. I wanted to wash it because I hate working on stuff that's dirty and muddy. So let's, we sprayed everything down, pressure washed it, cleaned it all up, and we're out there. You know, of course, T and I had towed it um, with a, with my buddy's truck. He let me use it, so we we took a strap and towed it about a mile down the road to Ken's place, and we're washing it. And we get it all clean, and we let it sit there and drip dry. Took a few pictures while it was nice and clean. And I'm, I'm going, okay, um, I've called uh, O'Reilly's. I've got the part on order, and that's what you see in the thumbnail of this video. Uh, the, um, the, the, the picture on, on the video was the, the clutch kit. It's ordered, and it should be here in the morning. Now, gentlemen... Here's the real curveball because I'm going to throw another real loop at you. The thing was stuck in the open position, right? So for whatever reason, plate and uh, pressure plate and throw up bearings, all that would not re-engage the flywheel, which is weird because if it fails, it's supposed to fail closed, not open. So if you got that, so is the springs worn or whatever? That was a big question. Well. We get there, and it's like, okay, we're all done. I washed both trucks, mine and my buddy's, because it is so muddy from all this mud and uh, rain and sleet and snow and all this. So I washed them all. We, we spent three, four hours just scrubbing the heck out of everything, pressure washing up underneath, because if I'm going to crawl up under there, I don't want crap dropping on me. That's just, I can't stand. Yeah, no. I love working on things, but I don't like dirt. Not that way. So, yeah. T's over here giggling at me. And uh, so here we go. Uh, Ken's like, okay, let's push it into the garage. So we're moving things and we're getting ready to push it in. And he, and he looks at it and, and and he says, you know, I forget what he said, but he, he, he went in and he says, that pedal is not coming up high enough. I said, what do you mean? It, it's coming all the way up. I, th I think it is. And he said, no, no, the, the, the pedal should be coming back. I said, well, that should, you know, that would make sense for one thing, but he says there's adjustment screw, and he was thinking that I should be able to adjust the screw. So, for those of you who understand, on the pedal, when you push down on the pedal, there's a screw, adjustment screw, that connects to the uh, push rod for the um, uh, uh, for for the master cylinder. So when you push down on the pedal, it pushes that push rod, and there's a bolt there, and I had already adjusted that some many months ago to get a little bit more pedal in it for uh, short stuff over here. <laughs> because, hey, now. <laughs> so we did that. I'd already adjusted that thing, and um, it, I didn't, I, I'm kind of at the end of the threads on that, so I don't have a whole lot more adjustment for that, right? And he said, well, there's a, you know, there's another screw here. And I said, well, okay, well, there's a, this other screw on the upper frame here. So when the pedal comes back, it catches that and it stops the pedal from coming all the way up. So it stops the travel on the upside, which would, um, uh, you know, for when you let off the clutch, I guess, give you more room to let off of it. Okay. So I saw that and I said, well, that doesn't make sense. And the pedal wasn't all the way up. So I went ahead and I backed that, you know, went down in there and, God, that was tight. Reached in there and backed it off. And I actually, I need to go snug it up because there was a, a locking nut on the bolt that you could lock down the position. And I forgot to do that. I need to go back and do that. But, so, okay, so I back off that, um, that bolt and it allows the pedal to come back up. 
and then all of a sudden my clutch is engaged again. So before I was shoving the pedal all the way to the floor and it wasn't disengaging the clutch. I, I didn't have enough pedal. Even after I had, you know, previously um, adjusted the, 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 the bolt that was on the end of the push rod that goes into the master cylinder. So how did this happen? Okay, so somewhere along the line, uh, once I let the pedal come back up, clutch engaged fine. Both uh, me, T, Ken went out, drove it around. I mean, it was, you know, I wouldn't say, you know, it's not brand new feel, but it was as good as when I got it or better. So, why did I not have, you know, any clutch pedal in the first place? And then all of a sudden, now I can, I can kind of see, okay, I can kind of see over time that um, that bolt kind of working its way down and slowly and slowly and slowly over time that bolt may have you know held it in and held it in further to the point where I didn't have full clutch release. But that's the opposite of the problem I had before. So what happened in between that caused the clutch you know and, and yeah there's probably some wear in it but um, both Ken and I drove it. He's like, man, this thing feels like it's operating properly. It's catching. It's still a little low, but it's not at the floor. I mean, about you know, two inches off the floor, three, two, three inches off the floor at least. And it catches fine in mid-pedal stroke. So now the pedal can come up further, which engages the um, clutch, which would explain that. But that bolt didn't go overnight get cranked all the way down if somebody did that'd be a hell of a joke to play on somebody wouldn't it <laughs> uh, but I don't know all right so as it stands uh, we got got the trucks washed up and then we brought them back from Ken's place so the the Toyota is sitting here and I can hop in in it and turn it on and, and vroom, drive right on that travel travel right on down the road Clutch feels good. Actually, feels felt real good when I started, you know, getting on it a little bit. I put a little pressure on it and didn't have a problem. So explain to me why it would go from I don't have, I can't get the pedal down enough to tinkering around with it, and all of a sudden I've got my clutch back, and it's like. Um, you know, the, the clutch has, has not had that much wear. So the motor in that thing was uh, rebuilt um, uh, by the guy I got it from, told me about 30,000 miles before I got it, and we put in another 15 or 20 on it. So it's, it's you know, it doesn't have 50,000 on the rebuilt. And I don't remember when I spoke to him if he said the clutch was rebuilt at the same time or not. It would make sense if you're going to pull the engine out and rebuild the um, engine. It would make sense to go ahead and get the clutch while you're at it because it's got 360,000 on it. So he did it a little over 300,000. He rebuilt the engine, put a you know header on it and whatnot. So I'm still scratching my head, and I'm not I'm not so sure the clutch is really all that bad because it feels pretty good now. Now I will say this, and I'll leave you with this, and then I'll I'll kick back and I'll let you guys. Tell me what's rolling around in your head as to why the switch in the way it acted. Because it, it, I'm still scratching my head. But I do have that on order. Um, it's supposed to come in to O'Reilly's in the morning. And, and I'm going to go get it. And there's a, another reason why I'm going to get it anyway. Because when I went to order it, I went in uh, town, which is... Um, I had to go... Um, into uh, Mountain Home um, and asked them at O'Reilly's and they said sure well there's one in there's one in both stores in Harrison there's one here there's one there and there's one up and so there's well we'll just get one shipped and and they and and they said um, I will have it in the store in a couple of days um, but you can't get it here you got to get it at the store that you want to pick it up so I had to go to the store I want to pick it up from order it and then have it um, shipped in. Well, I went to, when I got there, I, I said, oh yeah, suppose, supposedly there's one in Harrison. And they said, well, no, we're only showing one. 
one. Um, and uh, I said, okay. Um, uh, you know, and it, and it was going to take uh, till tomorrow, which is Tuesday, for it to get here from uh, somewhere up in Iowa. Supply chain issues. When we got the truck, I immediately bought a new set of tires for all four, brand new, all around there sitting in storage. I got new hoses. I got new... Um, uh, I got a power steering hose that needs to be replaced. The one's still working. It's just a tiny you know, little oiliness around it like it needs to be replaced, but I got it. I got new hoses. I got new belts. I got new filters. I got all kinds of parts. New brake shoes, uh, rear disc, uh, drum, front disc. I got parts and parts and parts so that I could keep this thing and keep it running for a long time. So whether or not the clutch is truly needing replacement or not, we're gonna we're probably gonna keep the clutch so on that note this video has gone long enough please um, fix my confusion <laughs> how do I go from can't get can't get the clutch to disengage to having you know nearly seems like nearly full clutch and everything working that bolt working its way down should not in my logical thinking have uh, uh, kept it just doesn't make sense uh, I'm, I'm missing something I can see it I'm a pretty good engineer and I know how bolts and nuts and screws and gears work and this one's got me a little baffled so y'all tell me what you think um, uh, and uh, it's good seeing a whole lot of new folks from uh, new new folks um, coming out from uh, the uh, interview on Billy that's nice to see uh, since uh, my original channel got taken down Y'all be blessed, and I'll meet you in the comment section. Take care. Bye-bye.